Okay, so my name is Ryan Peterson. I'm a current senior at Fern Creek High School. Um, I came here um, right after gradu graduating from middle school and I joined into the AP program. When I first heard about it, I heard that it was really hard, uh, a lot of extra work, and very challenging. And I thought, well, why not? Let's go for it. Freshman year, I regretted my decision very much. As the years progressed, I learned I learned that the AP program taught me a lot, and just being with those kids through all those same classes and the same hard curriculum, it just really brought us all together. I came in to Fern Creek through the ROTC program specifically because I was very interested in their drill team. They were classified as the most decorated drill team ROTC program in the nation, and I was like, well, that's pretty cool. I obviously want to be with the best. After a few years in high school, I decided, you know what, I guess I got to get into some more clubs and got to do more. I can't just come to school and then go home. So I decided to attempt to be the mascot. And then on Friday nights, I got to dress up as a tiger and get all sweaty, jumping around and dancing at games. Junior year, I joined into 4-H, our 4-H garden club. Um, my junior year, they brought in 4-H, which is a department sort of thing from the University of Kentucky that works with um, getting people in different communities to work with gardens and growing natural food to be able to sustain themselves. So every Thursday, people from the University of Kentucky come out and help us. We've even had graduates from Bellarmine come back and classes from Bellarmine come in and help us. And we've done quite a lot of things out there. The other big thing I've been, I've worked with in high school is NGLN, which is the Next Generation of Wireless Network. It, it works with the Breadloaf School of English from Middlebury in Vermont. Now, what it does is it's this group of students from different states. There's six different sites around the United States, and Louisville, Kentucky is one of them. Our specific site, what we do is we try to focus on things in our different communities very heavily with social changes, environmental changes, social injustice, economic problems, and we're trying to as the next generation come in and solve some of those problems. Now for component one, the prepared and resilient learner, it starts with my ACT. Now when I first took the ACT, it wasn't, it wasn't so good. So I was a little upset about it, didn't really want to think about it, but I decided I was going to try it again. Still didn't do too hot, so I decided to attempt ACT boot camp rather than just me winging it and being like, well, Here's what I got. I decided to stay after school a couple of times and get some extra help. Then once I took it my final time, I increased my score by actually quite a bit. So then I tried it again, did about the same, so I decided I guess I'm going to stick with that. After applying to a few different colleges, I was accepted into four. Hanover College, Bellarmine University, Kentucky Wesleyan, and Murray State University. After talking to the different colleges and working with financial aid and everything, my final decision was to attend Bellarmine University and major in biology and environmental studies. The end goal is to become, or the long-term goal is to become a wildlife biologist and conservationist to work with the various species of wildlife we have and try to give them a voice since they don't have one of their own. Now for component two, I'm going to talk about three things. For Effective Communicator, I'm going to talk about Moby Dick, which was a book I read and wrote a paper about. The Emerging Innovator is a is blogs and frogs, a form of, I guess you could say, a company we've built. And for my globally and culturally competent citizen, it would be the Day of the Dead project we did. Now, for my Effective Communicator, it's a paper I wrote in my senior year. We had we were given a list of books we could choose from and I chose Moby Dick because I was told it was about a whale, so obviously interested me. Once I began reading it, I began to dislike it very much. In fact, I would even say I hated that book. Um, I got a little ways in and I decided to stop reading it because I just didn't like it. Then the due date of the paper came. It happened, I did not have my paper, didn't even finish reading the book. So I went home that night and I decided, you know what, I can't let my grades fall, I, I gotta write this paper. But the book's not done. So at first I thought I could get on the internet and cheat and just look up some ideas, but I decided 
I wanted to actually read this book. Even though I didn't like it, I wanted to actually think about it and push myself to do it, so I did. I sat there and finished the book. <laughs> Still didn't like it in the end, but then I started writing the paper, and while I was writing the paper, it came easy to me. It wasn't a real struggle for me to try to hunt down ideas and keep a flow. I was able to state my thesis, and every single paragraph I, went, paragraph I wrote, I was able to relate it back and extend my thesis. It taught me that even though I didn't like it and it was a struggle and a challenge, I was able to push through and finish the project, and I actually got a high score before I turned it in late. And what it taught me was that despite disliking it, I was able to actually keep my head straight and really put in that work. Now for my emerging innovator, I want to talk about Vlogs and Frog, which specifically is a YouTube channel that my brother and I created, who's an 11 year old. We created to try to inform people about the various species of wildlife we have here around the world. For example, in this one, we caught a common snapping turtle. It started originally as an idea, and then we made one video as a little joke, and people started seeing it and being like, hey, you should do this more often. This is something you should look into. So we decided we'd continue to work on it. We started doing more research. We started actually having to learn how to edit and make videos. And what it taught us was, it taught us a large variety of skills. So now we know how to edit videos from start to finish. We know how to properly record. We know how to properly write research papers. We know how to properly go out into the field and conduct research rather than just looking up research on the internet. So now we know how to go out and collect our own information. Now for my globally and culturally competent citizen, this is a project we made also in my senior year. And it was a paper slideshow about the Day of the Dead. Now, our teacher gave us a list of what we had to do and everything. And on that list, it told us to use the internet. It told us to just look, at, look it up, get some facts down and everything. And that's what we started doing at first. But then my group and I decided we wanted to take a different tactic. So we decided to FaceTime one of our members' stepdad, who is from Mexico, who was born and raised there. So we, instead of us wanting, just looking on the internet and being like, this is what they did, this is what he, she did, we wanted to talk to someone that grew up there and experienced, so it was more of, this is what I did, this is how I experienced it, this is what I went and did as a kid, and this is how I felt about it. To get that first point of view, it taught us that there's more to it. What we found on the internet, a lot of things were not true, in fact, compared to what our friend's stepdad said. So what it taught us was that there's a lot of people here that don't want to go out of their comfort zone and interact with other cultures and stuff. So it leaves them ignorant because what they know is not accurate. So once we talked to him, we just learned that there were quite a few things that just weren't real that everyone was like, oh, that's what they do down there. When in reality, it's not what they do. It's just because we haven't opened up to learn about it. And it actually got us interested enough. So the next day we decided to come in and talk with our teacher and get in contact with some actual native native students that we have here at the school and we wanted to talk to them to see if it matched up with what her stepdad said and in fact it did and it just taught us that by stepping out of that comfort zone even just the like 30 seconds to be like hello la di da di da it taught us that you can learn a lot about the different cultures in this world Now the last one is the College and Career Symposium Project, which I also use as my school signature item. Now this was a project we were given to, we were assigned to group and then assigned to college, and then we had to present the information of that college to other students. So when I was first told we were being assigned group, I thought to myself, well, I'm in trouble. I'm gonna get put with a group. Some of them are gonna slack. I'm gonna end up doing all the work. And I wasn't very excited for it. Now, once we were given our groups, 
I was actually given a very decent group, and I was given a co given a college that I was personally interested in. So I was like, okay, this is interesting. Once we started working on the project, everything was running smooth in the beginning, and then we had a hiccup along the way where one of our members stopped doing anything. Wasn't participating, kept telling us stuff was getting done, but then when we got to class and wanted to work on it, see it, see how it was going, help out, there was nothing, nothing to show for. So two members of my group decided they wanted to instantly go to the teacher and be like, hey, cut them from the group, we don't need that here. But me and the other member decided we wanted to we wanted to actually figure out what was going on. So we pulled her aside and we talked to her and we were like, so we're not like mad or anything, but we're interested in finding a solution so we can move things along. We don't want to sit here and argue or bicker, we just want to find out what's wrong and how to fix it so we can get this project done. And it turned out that there were some things going on in her personal life that or prohibiting her from wanting to work on the project. So we, we talked and we were like, okay, we understand. And we ended up staying after school one day to finish it up. And that project, after we had that talk, everything kicked up enough. So instead of us just looking at pictures, we actually had two people go to the campus and film our own world virtual tour of the campus. So then we had that to present. And it wasn't just us being like, well, if you look at this map, it was like, well, actually, you know, you're walking down this way, you're gonna see this building. There was again that first person perspective of this is what it's gonna feel like to be on that campus. And it taught us that instead of just jumping to conclusions and being like, okay, you suck, we learned that if you take a second, step back and look at the bigger picture and actually try to figure out what the problem is before just throwing things around, you can actually get things not only done, but done to a better standard. And in conclusion, Fern Creek High School has very much prepared me for continuing and furthering my career into the environmental aspect of my personal life. There have been some challenges along the way, but overall, I have, I have come out a lot smarter and a lot more talented and a lot stronger since the beginning.